Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about a quite interesting AIO from Enermax and it's not your regular AIO. We have a quite uh, different, uh, well, pump block top, that's the first thing. Then we have a different uh, radiator than usual that you're used to, that's the second thing. And the connection to the fans which is, well, you'll see quite soon. So this is Enermax Lickmax Flow 360 AIO liquid cooling system which is also addressable RGB supported so you can connect it to your 5 volts addressable RGB header on your motherboard and control it with the motherboard software or if you don't have it you have a small controller that gives you an option to do that without that 5 volts 3 pin addressable RGB header on your motherboard so it gives you two options and which is quite cool because I know some of you guys are using older generation motherboards and that's quite alright totally understandable, but you don't have addressable RGB header. This will fix the problem, right? So, in terms of that, let's go through some specs and features quite quickly because I really want to go and deep dive into benchmarks because you'll love those. You'll really love those. So, we have a 360, which means three 120 millimeter fans. The dimensions are 120 times 120 times 26.8 millimeters. Mean time before failure is 60,000 hours. Speed is from 500 to 1800 RPMs, which is quite interesting as well. Then we go to the airflow, 58.03 CFM. Static pressure is 2.4 uh, millimeters H2O. Noise level, 23.46 decibels. And what I wanted to say about the connection, 8 pin. So it's not 4-pin for PWM, it's not 3-pin for your addressable RGB, it's 8-pin. So it kind of goes into some sort of a segment where it has a dedicated connection. But it has a connector inside the box that you connect to those fans because they're daisy chainable, quite short cable. Just enough to connect them in between and you don't have to, you know, use too much cables to reroute through the case you only have one cable that goes from that 8-pin to 4-pin PWM and 3-pin addressable RGB. Then we go to the support. It supports all sockets except for Threadripper, which is understandable. So then we go to the radiator dimensions. 400 times 120 times 38 millimeters, which brings us to the point that the whole thickness of the fans and the radiator is 64.8 millimeters. Tube length 400 millimeters, we have copper cold plate, aluminium radiator, rubber tubes. Speed of the pump is from 1200 to 3000 RPMs. We have ceramic bearing, mean time before failure is 50,000 hours. Then we have the VRM fan, which is quite nicely designed and it's even not that loud. The speed goes from 500 to 3000 RPMs and the rated current because it's it has an rgb of course and it really does look cool i really like it it's not loud the pump is silent as well and that's really cool what they stated is they have the next gen dual chamber extreme pump with patented shunt channel technology which brings us to the point that pump pressure is 30 percent up and the coolant flow rate is 20 percent up now the cover for the VRM fan is nicely designed because you can rotate it. So this is magnetically attached to the fan. Well, not on the propeller, but on the side uh, screws. And uh, it's rotatable. Depending on the orientation of the pump, you can easily rotate it and make it look quite nicely. Then we have a possibility to refill the radiator. So you get additional bottle of the coolant. And at the top part on the opposite side of the tubes, you have a small screw that you have to unscrew and fill it up. Now for the placement, for the AM5 it's quite simple. You have to remove the original retention brackets from the AMD motherboard because it actually has its own connections. And the cool thing about it is that for the AMD it's quite, I think what I noticed is it's much better to have, let's say, four point connections than the regular two that you get with the AMD motherboard because it evenly presses it down on the processor and gets more heat dissipation through the cold plate and everything else. So uh, this one actually has that. So what you have to do, as already stated, remove those plastic brackets, place four, I wouldn't call them thumb screws, some sort of a standoffs with the screw top and basically you just slide in the bracket for your pump block top 
and add four thumb screws. That's all there is to it. Because the block already has pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't even have to worry about that. Now, let's dive in into benchmarks. Aida 64 Extreme Edition, AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D with Gainward RTX 4070 Phoenix GS. CPU went up to 80 degrees Celsius and the clock speed went up to 4900 MHz. GPU was at 61, so it's really relevant. You'll see that when we cover the case that I have right here. Now, Cinebench is quite interesting. What I got here really did shock me. So the thermals on 7900X3D with this AIO is quite interesting. From 74 to 76 degrees Celsius. It eventually touched 77 in the, in the second to last test, but uh, this is more impressive CPU clock speed. It tr it reached three times average 5000 megahertz clock speed, and the rest was 4975. Eventually, once it went 4950. Now the scores, the peak score was 26640, and it stayed above 26500, which is outstanding. So I would say some average would be 56,570, 80. So that is really impressive, isn't it? I mean, the scores, I haven't seen clock speed on 7900X3D went on average on 5,000 megahertz. That's really something cool. And as already stated, I take out the average from each score to grab more accurate. If it went to 50, uh, 175, I wouldn't mention it if it eventually dropped down to 4,925, it's, uh, you know, somewhere average, just to give more accurate results uh, in those benchmarks. So, all in all, I'm quite satisfied with the Lickmax flow from Enermax 316. As you can see, it's quite thick. It's quite thick here on the top, but it still fits inside their case, which I will cover additionally, uh, because you need to check this one out. And it's quite an impressive AIO, I do have to say. So, uh, with all of that, I'll give it a PC Crazy approved badge because first of all, it did do great in the benchmarks. Secondly, easy to connect. There's really, even though the 8 pin might confuse you, it's really easy, straightforward. They are easy daisy chainable. You don't have to worry about uh, 3 pin addressable RGB and 4 pin PWM from the fans. You only have to worry when it goes from the 8 pin directly to your motherboard. That's all there is to it. So, what I can say is connection is quite straightforward. Of course, the pump also needs PWM and addressable RGB, but that's separated and you can eventually daisy chain the addressable RGB if you wish or if you desire because there is a possibility for that. Inside the box, you get everything that you need from the retention brackets, standoffs, uh, brackets for the pump uh, and that's all there is to it. Quite impressive with the performance and definitely deserves that uh, badge that I mentioned. So yeah, what's there left to say, except if you're really interested in the Enermax Lickmax Flow 360 AIO, you can check out the link in the description right below the video. And if you're new to the channel, like the content or you want to see more of my content uh, going uh, daily, you can always subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell because it does help the channel continue what it's doing so far. So yeah, that's all for today. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.